A very warm welcome to my dear students of class 12 science. Welcome to environmental science class. We are dealing with the chapter human beings and nature. Now today in this particular chapter we will start with the topic earth first then we'll move to the second topic is called Greenpeace in this Greenpeace we are going to talk about this mission statement and the strategy okay and the final topic of this particular class we learn about WWF that is World Wide Fund for Nature we learn about its goal and strategy okay so these are the three topics that we are going to cover in our today's class so first of all let us begin with the earth first okay so this earth first is mainly an environmental advocacy group a radical environmental advocacy group which will take a direct action against those who are trying are trying to damage the environment okay so they will work against those particular people or group of people who will bring a negative impact to our environment okay so they will take a direct measures against those particular people or the group or the agents who are hampering the environment so that's why they are called a radical environmental advocacy group okay that was founded by Dave Foreman, Mike Rosella and Howie Wolke in 1979 in the United States okay so now there are nearly around uh, we can say uh, 15 countries okay uh, more than 15 countries where we'll find this earth first group even in India we have got this earth first okay uh, it was mainly inspired by the book of uh, Rachel Carson's called uh, Silent Spring then uh, the novel of Edward Abyss the monkey gang and one of the let's say the philosophical thought of the book of the Aldo Leopold's called the land ethic so from these particular writers okay so the fairman's Mike Rosella, Howie Wolke they were inspired to mainly bring in this radical environmental advocacy group okay mainly to protect the environment so let's check it out whether you can see over here okay so we have got the Dave Foreman okay we have got Howie Walke who are mainly the founder of the earth first radical advocacy environmental group okay so just learn that uh, nearly around 15 countries including India we have got this earth first okay so in the early years uh, the group usually came up with far-reaching wilderness proposals, okay, which the mainstream environmentalists usually they used to avoid, okay. So they often use publicity stunts to drive home the messages, okay. They started off collection letter called the Fund for Wild Nature also, which was mainly used for research, publicity and education with the people by the earth for activities, okay. So they often use publicity stunts to drive home their messages. Clear? And after that, they started collecting fund also uh, in the name of, you can say, for wild nature. Okay. And it was mainly for which purposes? It was used for research, for publicity, and for the education by the Earth First activist. By mid 1980s, okay, the Earth First activist began to identify themselves with the deep ecology environmentalist. We have learned about deep ecology and the shallow ecology. Okay. So, so by mid 1980s, the earth fish activity, they began to establish themselves. They began to identify themselves as the deep ecology environmentalist. Okay. So they promoted the idea that all the forms on the earth, all the forms of life on the earth, that means the human life and the non-human life, which we have learned in the deep ecology topic. Okay. So they promoted the idea that all the forms of life on the earth may be human life or the non-human life they have got their own intrinsic value independent of the value to the human being because when we are learning about deep ecology member that all the life form on the earth has to be given a due importance and needs to be conserved because each of them has got its own intrinsic value and that value does not depend on how useful are they to the human life whereas shallow ecology they like you just got a type of uh, a selfish motive behind the conception of environment because they thought that environment is mainly for the use of the human life okay but deep ecology was mainly concerned that both the human life and the non-human life they have got their intrinsic value and that value does not does not depend on how useful it is to the human life okay so by mid 1980s so these earth fish activists they also began to identify themselves as the deep ecology environmentalist and 
they promoted the idea that all the life forms on the earth may be human life or the non-human life they have got this own intrinsic value depending on how useful they are uh, how useful they are or not to the human beings okay so all the life form has to be conserved has to be preserved now by 1985 okay in 1985 the activist took action against a lodging company logging company by tree sitting that means they used to sit at the base of the tree okay for support that was logging company they used to cut the tree they used to go deforestation so this earth first activity they used to sit at the base of the tree many to support okay so it was a type of uh, fairly successful civil disobedience movement so they were protecting the tree by sitting at the base of the tree by 1987 the activists became associated with direct action to prevent any development that was likely to cause damage to the environment okay like logging like construction of dam etc okay so some of the methods which were mainly been adopted by the particular earth first activist okay it was too radical that's why most of the members they usually move away from the group because of the ideology because they were taking, taking direct actions against those company okay like logging okay like creating dams which was directly affecting the environment so they were taking those type of steps like let's say which were sort of illegal steps okay so most of the members they usually move away from this particular or first group okay now the protests were however more often that not but in form of the roadblocks okay tree sitting or other form of civil disorder movements it usually moved to the other form like in the beginning they were sitting down the down uh, at the base of the tree okay they were blocking the uh, like they were blocking the roads fine but now the movement was taking a different form they were moving towards the illegal uh, sort of steps that we were taking against those particular groups who were empowering the environment due to which most of the members usually shifted towards the uh, shifted away from this particular group but whatever the step they were taking in okay whatever the radical step that they were taking in too direct or not direct to conserve the forest but we can say that this group has actively participated in protecting the mother earth from the environmental damage okay now next one we'll learn about the green piece okay so this green piece is a non-governmental organization and it was founded by bill darnell and dorothy stowe in 1971 in vancouver canada and uh, till now it's operating in over 40 countries okay the international coordinating office is located in amsterdam as a global organization Greenpeace focuses on the most critical worldwide environmental issues like oceans and ancient forest protection, alternative uh, sources of energy, okay, because fossil fuels that we are using, soon or later they usually become extinct, okay, it will no longer in use, it will usually become extinct from a planet Earth, and the that's why uh, they mainly started moving towards the, uh, finding out the alternative sources of energy. Then, main motive behind this one was to stop the climate changes because once we are using the fossil fuels generally we will deplete those fuels but at the same time use of those fossil fuels will generally affect the climatic condition of a particular place so that's why we have to move towards the alternative sources of energy then next focus was on the nuclear disarmament and into the nuclear contamination okay elimination of toxic chemicals and preventing the release of genetically engineered organisms into the nature this will obviously if we are trying to continuously produce the genetically modified organisms may it be plant or animal which genes have been altered okay that will learn little, little in biology if you are trying to alter if you are trying to bring the changes in the gene of an organism may it be plant or animal then they are called genetically modified organisms or genetically engineered organisms and if we are continuously producing these genetically engineered organism then that will surely affect the biodiversity of living organisms of both plants and animals so we have to prevent the release of the genetically engineered organisms so let's see uh, the photo we can see of bill darnell okay who is the founder of greenpeace you can see over here the bill darnell okay and uh, we have got the dorothy Stell, who mainly founded this non governmental organization called the green peace okay now let's talk about the mission statement of greenpeace 
Okay, so we are directly say uh, the main focus of Greenpeace. Okay, statement. So Greenpeace is an independent campaigning organization uh, which uses non-violent uh, principles. We can say creative confrontation to explore the global environmental problems and to force the solutions which are essential to a uh, green and peaceful future. Okay, so find out the problems which is mainly related to the environment and second one, you have to find out the solution also. Clear? So the main goal of green peace is to ensure the ability of the earth to nurture life in all its diversity. Okay, so to ensure the ability of the earth to nurture life in all its uh, it diversity. So therefore, the green peace seeks to protect diversity in all its form clear prevent pollution and abuse of the earth oceans land air and fresh water and all the nuclear threats promote peace global disarmament and non-violence these are the few mission statement of the greenpeace now let's move to strategy of greenpeace okay so greenpeace relies on individuals supporters and the foundation grant that they are getting it does not accept fund from the government political parties or from the corporations okay so it believes in direct actions which are triggered to public notice through various environmental issues okay and infinite decision for both public and private sector so that's why the strategy is to collect the fund, not from those political parties, from those corporation, co corporations or from the government, but it will simply rely on the individual supporters and the foundation grant. Okay, that's why it relies totally on the individual supporter. Okay, and it develops in direct actions which have triggered off legal action against the activist. So second first strategy is that dependent on individual supporter, and they will take the direct actions of the activist. So this is the strategy of Greenpeace. So in Greenpeace, we have to go through the mission statement and the strategy and the focus why this Greenpeace has been established. Clear? The next one we'll talk about the World Wide Fund for Nature, WWF. Okay, so let's check it out. So WWF, what the term called WWF? Okay, it's an organization which is committed to the conservation of the environment. And the founder of the organizations mainly they are like they were Sir Julian Huxley, okay, Peter Scott, and we have got Guy Monfort, and we have got Max Nicholson. So we have got uh, the photo of Sir Julian Huxley, who was alive, uh, who used to be one of the founder of the World Wide Fund for Nature, which mainly an organization that is committed toward the conservation of the environment. Okay, now let's talk about the mission statement. The mission statement WWF it mainly comprises of three parts now what are those parts first one is the conservation of biological diversity conserve the diversity biological diversity of our earth okay number two is the sustainable use of renewable resources you know what the sustainable uses means we have already learned in our previous classes the development okay where we can use the natural resources but we have to keep in mind that those resources must be available to the future generation also without hampering the environment that is called sustainable use okay so second mission statement of wwf is the sustainable use of renewable resources and the third one is reduction of pollution and the wasteful consumption so these are the mission statement of wwf now let us talk about the goals and strategies of WWF. Okay, so we will go point to point wise. So it is hoped that by 2020, okay, it is hoped mainly that WWF will conserve many of the world's most ecologically important regions by working in partnership with others. So the main goals of WWF are to protect and restore species and their habitat to protect these species along with the habitats where they are mainly found. So protect these species and their habitat. Number two is that strength local community's ability to conserve the local, uh, sorry, to conserve the natural resources. That means the protections, the conservation of the natural resources must be done by the local community. So the public participation or people participation is very, very important for the conservation of natural resources. Okay. Third one is transform market and policies to reduce the impact of the production and consumption of commodities so we have to make such a policies okay where we will reduce the impact on productions and the consumption of those commodity or the products next particular goal is to ensure that the value of nature reflected 
okay ensure that the value of nature is reflected in decision made by the individuals community government business and is not ignored in course of policy making so we have to ensure that the value of nature will be reflected and those value of the nature those value of nature will not be ignored in due course of policy making or policy framework next one is mobilize people to support the conservation because if hundreds of millions of people will come forward for the conservation of ecosystem conservation of natural resources then surely we can conserve it so these are the few strategy or the goals of double double a okay so in an effort to achieve its goals the double double a has included not only the conservationist who is to conserve the environment who is to conserve the natural resources by providing information and scientific data but also businessmen for taking practical decisions and executing the well managed plans so the wwf works closely with world conservation union and has formed the partnership with the united nation un the world bank and the european union so today we have learned about art first okay the no radical environmental advocacy we will take the direct measures against the activist who will uh, like help will uh, create a negative impact on the environment then we move to greenpeace the non governmental organizations okay then we have learned about the wwf the world wide fund for nature so this was the today's class okay thank you and we will be meeting in our next class okay with a new chapter so till then stay safe take care of yourself and happy learning thank you